Welcome biologists and in today's session we're going to be looking at the control of development of body plans and this is regulated by homeobox genes. This is taken from the OCR specification for A-level biology under the topic of cellular control. First thing we need to know is what is this homeobox and a homeobox is a group of regulatory genes. Now don't forget from the last video regulatory genes are genes which products switch on and off other genes. It's comprised of 180 base pairs long, which code for 60 amino acids. And this sequence is very, very highly conserved, which means it's very, very similar across different organisms, such as plants, animals, and fungi. Now the homeobox code for the homeodomain, and the homeodomain are proteins. And these proteins bind to DNA, or the parts of DNA, to switch on and off other genes. And by doing so, they control the body plan, which we'll look at shortly. Now, the Hox genes, which is a group of these homeobox genes in animals, is, as I mentioned before, is responsible for the position of the body plan. And it's been duplicated over time and as evolution has progressed. So this nematode word, worm here at the top, this simple worm, has one cluster of the Hox genes. The Drosophila melanogaster, which is the fruit fly, has two clusters. And vertebrates, such as the lion here, have a variation between 9 and 11 copies. So the more complex the organism, them, the more clusters of the Hox genes that it will have. If there was a mutation to occur within these Hox genes, it would be very detrimental to the organism and the organism would probably die because this, this section of the genome is so highly conserved and it regulates the body plan. So uh, this body plan that was talking about, uh, this is to do with animals being segmented. And these different segments have different functions in different animals, and they are determined by these Hox genes. Now, the order and sequence of these genes, of the Hox genes, determines the development. For example, the head to tail orientation, segmentations, which you can see that are broken down here into these little segments in the organisms. Uh, the position of the limbs and the position of the eyes. So on this side here, you can see the human, fetus and adult. And on this side, you can see the flies, embryo and the adult. And as you can see, they both have similar colours of Hox genes. They both have these highly conserved Hox genes. However, um, they just code for slightly different um, functions within these different organisms. But the whole idea here is it's highly conserved and it codes for the body plan within these organisms. So as I mentioned before, these homeobox genes can be found within several different organisms. And just to show you this in a little bit more detail, we have these examples of Hox genes here, which are very similar across different organisms. Obviously, the mouse and the human have more copies of this gene in comparison to the Drosophila. Here again, we have different organisms, and it just shows you here, right at the beginning, that the very, very, very early embryo stages are very, very similar. And as development progresses, it's when the um, embryo becomes obviously more specialised to its function in terms of what that organism actually is. But all of this segmentation and the development of the embryo is determined by the Hox genes. So in the studies of the Hox genes, we normally use the fruit fly. And the fruit fly has very clear segmentations within its larvae and in, in the maggots. And when they become grown-ups, when they become adults, we can see these specialised appendages. Now, we use fruit flies uh, to study the homeobox. The main reason is this short lifespan and they're very small. So they're easy to keep and breed. We can change or uh, cause mutations and see their impacts very, very quickly. Uh, anything in the red box here is taken directly from the MART scheme, so it's well worth paying attention to. Now, the wild type or the um, with no mutations as the wild type would look like this. We'd have antennae, we'd have our mouth appendages, we'd have these halters, and we'd have obviously the wings within the certain areas. Now, what scientists can do is manipulate and cause mutations within the hot genes to see what that would impact on. And here are some examples of what scientists have done. So they've caused the mutation which has allowed legs here instead of antennas. We've got wings for halters. And here we've got halters for wings. So they can alter and mutate the Hox genes to see what impact that has on the development of the organism. Now, there's different things that can impact on the development of the uh, homeobox. Uh, so hormones can trigger certain genes to be turned on and off. And we have external factors such as temperature in the turtle and drugs such as thalidomide as well, which can impact upon the homeobox development. So there we have it.